If you want to take your time series forecasting to the next level, the box Cox transform is something you must know. And in this video, we'll explain what the box Cox transform is, why it's important, and how we can do it all in Python. So let's get into it. So now on your screen, you'll see a notebook, which we're going to walk through. That's going to explain to us the key concepts behind the box Cox transform. So in my previous video, which I'll link somewhere on the screen here, uh, we discussed the idea of stationarity. Um, and stationarity is basically a really important part of time series analysis. And what it's doing, as written here, it ensures our data is not statistically changing through time. So what this means is that all the statistical properties, like the mean and variance, are constant. It doesn't change as our time series evolves or goes forward in time. Now that's important because, as I've written down here, when we're carrying out any analysis or forecasting, it makes our life a whole lot easier. Again, if you want to know more about stationarity, make sure you check out the previous video. Now, one requirement for stationarity is that our data needs to have a constant variance. And what this means is that the fluctuations, as I've written here, are on a consistent and similar scale year on year or day to day, whatever kind of time scale our uh, time series is indexed at. And one way to achieve this is taking a natural logarithm, which we did in a previous video. However, this makes a big assumption, which is normally fairly correct, that our data follows an exponential trend. And this is not necessarily true, and we, as we will show in the in the next section. So let's now discuss what is the box Cox transform. So as I've written here, the box Cox transform is something that changes our non-normal data to data which is more normal distribution like, right? And the reason this is done is the way you know the way linear regression fits to data is that it assumes the distribution comes from um, a normal distribution. That's the assumption of the regression for the most part, or the, or the residual assumption. And when we fit time series uh, forecasting models uh, to our data, they also assume a distribution. And most of the time, that is a normal distribution. Things like ARIMA, linear regression, so ARIMA, um, again, we'll discuss all these concepts, but they have a built-in assumption that when they're trying to model parameters, they, those parameters belong to a normal distribution. And so what the box Cox transform does, as I said here, it allows our data to resemble more of a normal distribution. Therefore, when we're fitting forecasting models, they can more correctly, um, you know, they'll lead to better results because we're kind of closer to what they assume the distribution is going to be like. So therefore, maximum likely estimation can be used to determine the parameters in a more efficient and correct way. So that's the general gist behind the box box transform and why we need it. Now, the box box transform is basically derived like this. So what we have here is, is parameterized by the lambda value that takes value from minus five to five. Now, as an example, why here is time series, um, just to be clear. And what we have here is, is if we have lambda is zero, then we have natural log, right? So when lambda is zero, we, we're basically saying our series is an exponential. However, if you know lambda equals two, we have a squared, you know, y squared, if lambda equals three, you have a cubic transform and so on. And basically what we want to do is we want to select, it makes it all seem a bit arbitrary, but we, what we want to do is we want to select the best value of lambda that's going to give us the data to be the most normal. Um, again, this process is actually fairly complicated, but luckily for us in computing packages, this is very um, easily done for us. So we don't worry too much about it. So that's a general gist. So the key caps to remember here is that the box clock transform changes our non-normal data to data which is more normal and does this by using this parameterization and trying to find the most optimal value of lambda that leads to that um, non-normal or that normal state of the data. Let's now quickly run through an example. Uh, we'll first start with visualizing some basic data. Again, this is this is data I pulled from Kaggle. Um, the link will be in a notebook and also the Medium blog that I've linked below. Uh, and it's basically just showing the US airline passenger volumes through time uh, uh, from 1948 to 1960. Now, what we see here is that the data is clearly not stationary, but more importantly, what we're looking at is how the fluctuations change yearly, right? So in 1960, we see the high and low around, you know, sort of like on a 300 difference, whereas in 1950, we see the difference is more like 30 right so basically what, what what's obvious here is that there's an increasing variation in the fluctuations on the yearly scale as time increases so the variance is not stationary the variance is increasing through time 
And what we want to do is we want to apply the box Cox transform to stabilize this variance. So to apply the box Cox transform, very easy. We get the box Cox function all the way from SciPy stats, and we simply just apply it to our time series. So in this case, that time series is data. Uh, our data frame is data, and our series is or series name is hashtag passengers. We should apply that transformation, and the result is going to be a box Cox transform, um, which you know which best fits that data and the lambda value that's best fitted that data, right? So we get two outputs: the lambda value, which it computes automatically for us, and also the the transform time series. So by plotting that, we get this. So what you see here, the data is now a lot more stable, uh, or the, the, the yearly fluctuations are a lot more stable. They're not increasing through time. They're pretty much very consistent. And we've also output the best value of our Lambda. So you see our Lambda is you know, 0.148. So it's nearly exponential, but not quite. So this basically, you know, you can use a natural log a lot. It works in most cases. But what we see here is that the best transform is actually not necessarily a purely logarithm transform is close to it, but not exactly right. And therefore, you know, if you want to be more accurate when you're when you're preparing your data for forecasting, the box box transform is much better than just assuming a logarithm transform. Again, we didn't go into all the mathematical deep details, but that's what we're trying to do in this course. And the box Cox transform is something you can easily apply in Python and not worry too much with the ins and outs of it. If you're really interested, feel free to Google and research how it's actually done the modeling for the Lambda value. But to be honest, in most cases, we don't need to know that. We just need to know the concept behind it and how we use it in Python. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.